Greetings, salutations, respect, and love. I am Scott, and you're on the Prague Corner. Oh, my dear friends, what do we have in store for you today? We have uh, all the way from Poland, it's Cheshi. And uh, yeah, he invented a name that's almost impossible to pronounce for non-Polish speakers. And uh, apparently he's a little camera averse, but uh, we got him. Let's let's check his mic, see if he's there. All the way from Poland, how you doing today? Thanks. I'm just fucking amazing right now. Yeah, yeah I've been waiting for this episode like uh, for for ages now. And yeah, my camera just refused to work with uh, with this pro. I mean, I have a Sony Handycam from like in the old era, not the DV one, the the USB hard drive one. And just for some reason, it does. I've read it does not have a fucking you no know, USB streaming option. It's one of the lower end models, and you can only camcord on the internal yeah. storage. So yeah, we do we do what we have to do yeah, and I have an image a slideshow that I can just put yeah, in yeah, keep the images coming give me slideshows yeah, all the way through yeah, 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 yeah. And, and I can just uh, add like a covers album covers and shit like Sure 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 but uh you know just a couple things honestly uh uh you know a couple of months ago I probably wouldn't have been too happy about this but what I've been realizing is that at least half of the people that watch the prog corner they're not watching they're just listening right they yeah, so the audio is the most important yeah, thing podcast yeah like a podcast yeah exactly yeah. exactly it's a podcast just put on and, your prog corner and do something else just enjoy exactly it. and and honestly there's no way you'd be better looking than me anyway so the people get to see me and i'm okay with that but today on the channel you pick the topic uh you know, so I was very excited when you said, hey, let's talk about Kaipa versus Kaipa de Capo. And because, uh, you know, I think a lot of people probably slept on this one right here. Uh, it was on a, it was on a it was on a weird small label. What label even uh, it's it's the Flower Kings label, Fox Trot. It's Royna's own label. Yeah, it's just it's an in-house thing on Fox yeah, Trot. You know, so he sold it on his website. Yeah, man. Inside Out like refused to release it because they only have Kaipa, you know, had Kaipa, like the Hans Lundin project, and they refused to have two Kaipas at the same time, you know, because that was fucking outsell that original, you know, the, the faker. Well, <laughs> no, you joking. know, I had uh, I had Hans Lundin on the show uh, yeah, last just, month. Team Royna Stolt, you know. I was gonna ask him about this record and how he felt about it, but I mean, don't mention that. To I Hans. think I know don't. how he feels about it. I mean, he, he like. He rejected the offer to join Kaipa de Capo, like, like you know, because Roy now gave an offer to you know re reunite with all the four members and just record a new Kaipa album with all the four original members from '74. But Hans Lund didn't just refused to, to join that, you know, he just didn't want anything that. to do with it. And he was even doing his he own like thing. suggested not calling it Kaipa at all, just yeah. to remove the that I think Roy is where. Started. I think that's where uh, Hans had a problem. He didn't have a problem with them getting together doing music. I think he had a problem with them calling themselves Kaipa, you know? Yeah, and he had a problem with, like, joining them to play live because Hans yeah. just would not want to play live. That was in the contract, and he just, oh, got to play live? No, I'm out. Yeah, Hans doesn't like still, doing live stuff, does yeah, he? Yeah, just because, you know, let's talk about the history of Kaipa, you know? I'm a huge Kaipa nerd. Well, it started in, like, uh, late, mid, uh, early 70s with, like, Saint uh, Michael's, the organ rock by Hans Lundin and Thomas Eriksson. You know that one? How, yep. no, just, yeah, ha, Saint, uh, Saint, uh, it was Saint, uh, Saint San, Michael's. Saint Michael's, they put two yeah, albums right. out. Yeah, two uh, albums apparently, out. Disques Plus Carrel, uh, label from Greece, is, is reissuing both of those Saint Michael albums. Yeah, so I'm excited. It is available on CD, but I was yeah. almost going to pull the, the plunge, but uh, I was like broke at the time because I had I'd already bought some gear, like this mic stand I'm using right now. Like, no shit, right? But, you know, uh, so then uh, Royna Stolt, a young guitarist, like joined that. I mean, before Royna Stolt joined uh, St. Michael's to, to form Kaipa, well, Hans Lunden uh, just created Uda Kaipa, which was... Yeah. Uh, I had a hit on the vinyl, like a seven-inch single. It was like a brass kind of pop song. And then Roy Nestop came along, a teenage wunderkind, you know, of, of, of guitar and songwriting. And just, they, they turned from Ura Kaipa to just Kaipa, and that was, and that was history. And, then and we put out a demo three, in 74, a demo, three really a demo. good albums, right, in the 70s? Three 
in the 74 demo, man, it's just amazing. Like, we got uh, amazing songs such as, uh, let, me see, let me just have my cheat sheet here. Uh, Kaipa. Because you had Kaipa uh, came from Urz, Kaipa, which came from San Michaels, and it was Hans Luden and Thomas uh, Erickson was part of all of that. But at the same Erickson. time, uh, Hasse Brunusson, uh, no, from New Jubelorget, uh, no, he was in uh, Samla Mamasmana, right. the one, and he yeah. rejoined Royna Stolt, he's also from Uppsala, you know, Uppsala. So he rejoined Royna Stolt to play drums on the flower king 1994 so it's like a clash of samla and you know and kaipa in a way yeah yeah and uh and brutus then drummed on like uh most of that album but didn't uh jamie salazar drum on a couple tracks i mean uh haseb uh, brunusson uh, was a drummer first but then yeah. his role was diminished like gradually because he okay. played real drums like get on one song on back in the world of adventures and the rest uh, drum job was, was like jamie salazar yeah but then uh, he was like uh, downgraded to just the percussionist but he still played with flower kings just not the kit just random percussion like chains and eyebrows and you know paper clips you know this kind of weird stuff but it, it was cool and added like this ah scream like voice like ah you know this yeah it was him like on the garden of dreams you know that yeah, yeah I love Garden of Dreams. Love is the word. Love is yeah. the word. And that, that those scream at the very beginning was Hasse Brunus and doing you know, some crazy voices, you know. So he provided like sound effects and stuff. It's fun. So and then Kaipa, Kaipa. Uh, Royna Stolt leaves Kaipa in the 80s and they put out a couple records that I did not like. We thought Kaipa was dead and buried. And then Hans decides to uh, reform the band. He's the only member uh, from the 70s. But uh, he put together a good band, right? I mean, well, we we did have Roy and Astolt on the first three comeback yeah, albums. No, no, the rhythm section, the, no, Ericsson and Bergman, they were like, they were not there. Yeah. But, you know, in 2005, they like did a friendly reunion, all four of them, but they didn't record anything. In 2005. So it took, a, it took a few years later. They started doing some dates as uh, Kaipa de Capo, what, yes, like in uh, 2015? Yeah, like Bodin was the original keyboardist, Thomas Bodin for the Kaipa de Capo. But then Bodin had like an ear injury, like tinnitus, and then Roy kicked him out. Oh, I did uh, not know that. And then he like had a little, you know, uh, So we get uh, Max Max Lorenz, the great oh, man, Swiss amazing keyboard player. Session player. Yeah. yeah. He was on Moran. He went to the band Moran. Yeah. And like the Wraith from the Moomins, the original name. He had that, that ghost that would like slowly wander around in the Moomin village. That was Moran. Because the original Moomin's book were, was like written in Swedish, not Finnish. It was before the Finnish uh, Industrial Revolution. So back then, the Swedish was like the language of like, intelligence and prestige in Finland at the, at the beginning. But then those smaller rural uh, fin Finnish uh, you know, places just got bigger and more industrialized. And so the Finnish language spread over to uh, the, uh, Finland and like, dominated over the Swedish. You know, that in the 70s and 60s. And so that's uh, when the Finnish language uh, rose to prominence in Finland. And, you know, Ruotsi, which means Swedish in Finnish, it just, you know, just got downgraded into like a minority language. Because before that, the Swedish was like the language of Finnish literature and, and movies. Right. And like the first, uh, you know, movie by fucking whoever is. Uh, Ingmar Bergman, the, you know, the director, you know, uh, you know, not the drummer. Not, uh, not he, the drummer, yeah. Yeah, same name, yeah. yeah same yeah. name, but yeah, yeah, not, yeah. that so Ingmar called, is not the drummer yeah, on this album. It was called Chris and uh, Crisis, and the narrator was Finnish. It was Finnish actor, because Swedish Finnish at the time was very similar to uh, Rik Svanske. Because it was there was no differences, and the, the Finnish uh, speakers tried to emulate this prestigious accent when in movies, because it was forties movies very, very, very rigid in terms of like performance. It was like theater basically. It was before the you know, color qualization of movies in general, like Hollywood. This when Citizen Kane, yeah, it was all it was all like very rigid. It was one of the first movies that kind of tried to break away from that. Okay. So, uh, Kaipa, yeah, the demo, man, 70, 70, 1974, unedited master demo recording. Yeah, it's just, that was the proto Kaipa, I should say. It was released uh, only as a bonus in like a, uh, in a compilation because at the time it didn't even, it didn't even have a release. It was like a tape recording for a mixer, you know? Right, right. It was like, it, it, they got it in a basement or something. 
you can read it on Hans Lundin's website. And just uh, they recorded like a very shoestring budget kind of demo, almost like a bootleg album themselves. And they, and they, and they used like a real to real tape recorder on lowest mm. speed and low quality tapes. Uh, and they had like a mix down stereo with all the effects and guitar amps all went into one sing single ta sh two track tape. So there was no multi tracks there, just one right. mix down. So you can't even do a remaster of it with original sounds. So yeah, it's low quality, but the songwriting is just amazing. Like my favorite song is, of course, you know, uh, you know, uh, the uh, early version of Soccer Art for Seedor, which is a more up tempo version of uh, the, uh, the one that ended up on Kaipa self titled. Right. It's less polished, but more raw and more, uh, it's less, more uh, upbeat, you know. So uh, between uh, the debut album, uh, the second album, uh, Nyet Inget Under Solen, or the third new, album, new. Uh, let me, let me say, let me say that. Solo. Let me say say it again. Nyet Inget Under Solen. Thank you. Or the third <laughs> album, Solo. Which is your favorite of those three? Uh, I guess the debut is my favorite, but of course, Juan de Bedrar, the... 20 minutes song is just gorgeous, you know. Yeah, I like the part called Overheaten, which has these raw vocals. Allegedly, they were done by uh, the drummer, really. You know, Betty Man, that's Lita Minst Potom, the Buddha, Lita Pomest. We made that the pianos and stuff. We made that. How many yeah. languages are you're you're <laughs> how many languages do you speak? You sound like uh, you're speaking uh, pretty good Swedish there. I, I studied it thanks nah. to Kaipa, you know. Kaipa was the reason I studied Swedish. I wanted no to way. understand the lyrics, man. No way. So you got Paul Fard from the demo, and it's just, man, it's a, it's a mini epic, and it has the classic Hans Lundin organ sound already in it. Let's move on to the proper album, the 74, mm. you know, the, the, the big review of the Kaipa band, yeah. released by Decca Sweden. Fantastic album. I, I love those three 70s albums. But uh, when Kaipa came back, uh, with notes from the past. Uh, how are you feeling about this new version of Kaipa versus uh, 70s Kaipa? I can tell Roy was not comfortable in that formation. He was trying to like be a control freak for once again. Like he was into mind revolutions. You can hear Roy's input like st sticks out from the Hans Lundin yeah. like Like the song Mind Revolution. The first part has Roy's songwriting all over. Like the company trying to buy and you're so it's a Roy right. lyric. Come on, like oh, sure. for the love of gold. Like for Flower Kings from the Banks of Eden. The company trying to buy and you're a similar lyric, you know, and your soul. And then you got the company's trying to buy and your soul. You know, it's just it's, it's Roy's writing. Yeah. But then it's more interesting folk Hans Lundin sound and you can hear it's a like a, like a hodgepodge of Royne ideas and Hans ideas they're just clashing like crazy in yeah. revolutions and that was the last album of the new Kaipa with Royne's salt on it so we can hear some clashes of like egos and stuff you can yeah. hear that it's all I right. agree and honestly when uh, Royne Stolt left for the second time after Mind Revolutions I thought it was uh, going to be a disaster because they replaced him with a guy named Per Nielsen, Actually, some some shredder yeah. from yeah, but that some was metal they, band called Scar Symmetry. Come yeah, on, man. man, that ain't gonna work. Yeah, and and they and then just changed into a different band and became like its own thing. Finally, you know, the two yeah. bands kind of like completely just you know just this you know disembodied. You know, like. The Kaipa by Roy now it wasn't Roy was free from you know being a Hans Lundin you know kind of a you know worker. He went back to Flower Kings full time, and Hans was happy to be just a control freak once again. Oh yeah. So so so, so and, and it actually worked towards the advantage of the of both bands because had Lundin uh, stayed, for we wouldn't have Kaipa de Capo because mm -hmm. Max Lawrence's songwriting on Tuna Na, the big song. Yeah. Which is so fantastic, man. Without Max Lawrence, Kaipa the Cap, and in, instead with Hans Lund in, in his place, it would have been worse. You know, it would have been that good. Yeah, because Hans I, Lund at I'm, that time, I'm a big fan of that. Uh, he was not that into this kind of music, you know. Just Hans Lund was didn't want that old you know, Swedish language sound. Like Hans was just not gonna do that. But Roy was so into that, man. Tuner, yeah, man. There was Nesulen Sista Strular. Licks in Stila Lake, Paul Min Hood. Yeah. So yeah, great. No, Such a great album. A, a real pleasure. I, I love the artwork too. Yeah. But hearing Roy sing in Swedish, right? 
We actually get to hear some Swedish singing on this. Man, Just like amazing. the old days. You can hear Roy in the Swedish like here on uh, Vill Ever Her. Vill yeah. Ever Her. Yeah, that's, that's really the main track is uh, that yeah. sec, uh, yeah. what is that? The uh, Vill Ever, Vill Ever, uh, Vill Ever Her. Yeah, that's the Vill song Ever you can really hear him singing. And fucking cool, man. It's Vill mainly so, uh, Michael Stolt singing lead on that album, though. Yeah, and, yeah uh, Michael Stoltz, the main lead star. Yeah. He was in Molden's band before, Eggs and Dogs, remember that? Right. Uh, Hollywood Bimbo Run, a funny name for a Prague song, and the concept is just so non-Prague, but it worked. Because yeah. Of, because, because of Bowden's amazing just ideas. And it featured Moon Safari uh, vocal yeah. harmonies in it. Like, oh, yeah. The, Have uh, you heard the new Thomas Bowden album yet? No, 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 I haven't. No, that interview, I couldn't even make out anything. I know, else. I know. The audio was terrible. Sad. The bigger yeah, the star, the worse yeah, the audio. The, it's always, the, that, the, way, yeah, it's always that way, man. It's always that way. Yeah, but at least, you know, Thomas Bodin, I mean, he was going to do a Satin Red, I think. That was yeah. when I stopped watching him. Is Satin Red, like, cancelled? Satin Red, right? Yeah. By Thomas Bodin. Is it cancelled? I think Satin so. Satin Red. Yeah. Oh, fuck. Um, I think so. I have high but hopes in it. Delayed. I have high hopes. I don't, I don't think he's cancelling. I think it's delayed. But yeah. the whole the whole point of what we were doing today here was kind of comparing and contrasting. Yeah, because uh, after I kind of the couple. Yeah, Children and of Kaiba. Yes. This Children was the one that Sounds. came out right after, after, just right after, right after the Kaiba Deca Black. Like a I'm couple months, ha, right? You haven't seen the last from me. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Like, <laughs> oh, I'm gonna show these guys how it's done. You know how I I would do it. You know, it's amazing. Yeah, it's cool. But you know, is there is a little reference in the lyrics to the you know old Kaiba? Like when you listen to the song uh, Dogen's Port, there is a lyric that says. Uh, let me find it. Her songs like "Nær Midvetandets Treskelnus," which means uh, when the threshold of understanding is reached, and it is uh, uh, quoted in. It's quoted right in "Children of the Sounds," in the song, uh, the title song, I think. I I did not know that. Yeah, you see, you learn something new every day. Now, how do you how do you feel about "Children of the Sounds"? As far as like the, the the latest like ten Kaipa albums, the the new version, the English uh, speaking version of Kaipa, how do you figure this one slots in with them? Because honestly, I did not like Children of the Sounds when it first came out. I thought it was terrible. I, I thought, thought it, was, it was just repetitive, you know. I, I thought like, it was the worst thing they ever did. Yeah, I thought it was repetitive. I thought it was boring. You know what I like? I like the Vitiar, amazing but, album. Yeah. But I was wrong, man. I have spent more time with Children of the Sounds than probably any other Kaipa. It's not album. as flashy as, uh, yeah. you know, Doshkap this monotony because it just has more of less of a crazy uh, in your face, you know, inventive sounds, and it's more of a comfort prog. Yes. So you gotta, you, you just don't, you don't, ha you just have to you know, remove all your expectations of the old Kaipa and just read it as its own thing because when you compare it to Kaipa da Capo. Warner's project is, of course, the better album by now, far. This album is also notable in that it is the final album for Morgan on drums. Yeah, yeah, he just said so many gigs at the point. He just he couldn't just you know cut it uh, schedule yeah. wise. Yeah, but then they hired an, a different drummer, and that's, in my opinion, when it went downhill like crazy. Like the next album called. Uh, Kurt's Kong. Urskug. Yeah. I liked Urskug. it, but I didn't love it. I do like the new one, though. Some are grinning I, stupid. I don't like it. I no? just don't like it. It's just it's the same old stuff with like it all blends together into like a like you know like a little. It's too repetitive. Just sounds like the same song recycled. I'm sorry, but just they need a breath of fresh air. Yeah. No, I I, I definitely understand. And they I need think, a new songwriter. And, and I think songwriter. that's why this one here. Uh, actually hits me a little bit harder and that it's structured differently. You've got the epics up front and then it ends with two shorter songs, which actually, to me works really well because it kind of breaks up that monotony. The last two songs, The Shadowy Sunlight and What's Behind the Fields. I like those two songs a lot. The album, the album has monotony in the title is the non-monotonous one, you know. <laughs> you know? It's the more interesting one. Yeah? That's a good it's one. ironic, right? It's ironic. It's yeah. funny. It's yeah. Funny. Yeah, the song called, uh, let me see. It was a quote from Dugan's Port in this. I'm, I'm, I'm scanning through the booklets. Uh, let me find it. 
in the threshold of yeah, there you go. It's in uh, on the edge of New Horizons. There's a line uh, on the threshold of perception. All the gates of time, and you know, gates of time. It's you know, Dogen's Port, the gates of day. You know, yeah, that's the reference. And threshold of perception is Medvedandet's uh, Truskel. So it's you know, it's a reference. Seek reference to Dogen's Port from the second album. Hmm. Inget Nut. Yeah, nice. I noticed it right away as a nice. fan. Good job. You so see, that's Swedish where there's some Swedish, uh, some Swedish language that probably yeah, helped. Yeah, paid off. Yeah, paid off. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But the Hyper de Capo, man, it's fucking amazing. Just one of my favorite Royna projects from the late era, from the post uh, Baden era, because you can hear that it's like a passion project. Like the small label, the the minuscule advertising, the they, they were gonna do like a passion project. It's obvious. They, were, they weren't shooting for like fame and just right. like any marketing. They did it for fun. You can hear that in the songs. They, just, they chose Swedish language. That alone shows it's just a passion. I love letter to the old, like a, like a reunion, like a friendly reunion. It feels like a friendly reunion yeah. of the old four guys. Just, let's make it one more album, just the old way, and just play some shows and. Just release this as a testament yeah. to the So you nostalgia. got the blue vinyl on it. It's cool. I don't have a record player. I have all my albums in like FLAC format, like looseless audio. Right. <laughs> to each their own, you know. Yeah, man. So, yeah, just amazing. All formats are good. It doesn't matter. It's the music that matters. I don't well, care. Yeah, sort of ignores the, the Kaipa on the Polar label, the ABBA label. Oh, that's the drummer, I think. Ingmar Bergman. I think that's cool. Anger. Yep. Yeah. That's Ingmar. Ingmar. That we know who that is. Lawrence. That is oh, Lawrence. Oh, that is Max right there. Max Look Lawrence. at that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That guy can play. Fucking amazing Hammond player. This, this is uh, Michael Stoltz. That's the brother. That's Michael. Yeah. yeah. And then we got uh, the Royna action. That hair, man. I His love hair it. just stayed from this youth to this old age. This, this I man. love Royna. Royna's the yeah, only one in the world who's got better yeah, hair than me. Man, yes. Those jeans were just amazing. Like, he didn't lose his hair. It just stayed the same, you know? And that's the bass player. Uh, the opposite, and there he know? is. The opposite. He got bold, you know? You can, you can hear the signs of him, like, bolding, you know, in the beginning. But now he's, like, completely bold, but definitely the same quality player. So, that's it. That's cool. Well, that was the thing that really surprised me, because we haven't really heard anything from those two guys that rhythm yeah, section and, and doing uh, like session they, work i think they were like yeah. hate this like they was doing like maybe little shows for limited audience in sweden right. and it's amazing and yeah, they got it got, got together and created this masterpiece basically well they still got it you know clearly amazing. uh they can still play because what listening to that kappa to kaipo album honestly it's kind of weird because Groin is the only Flower King on the, well, you know, his brother Michael. The two Stoltz are the only Flower Kings on there, and it sounds more like a Flower Kings record than a Kaipa album. It actually sounds more like a Kaipa album than a Flower Kings album. I disagree. I think it sounds like, I think it sounds exactly like something off a Desolation Road. Well, it or, sounds like Kaipa from Solo, the album, you know, because that maybe, was yeah, the control. I'll, you know what? I'm going to give you that. I'll give you a combination of uh, Desolation Rose and Solo. You smash yes, them together. Exactly. <laughs> the song called uh, Respectira Min Vald was so cool because it had one last uh, song line by Hans Lundin on lead vocals. On the last chorus, yeah, when it goes like the harmon, yeah, you can hear uh, Hans Lundin doing like very nice vocals, and from that point on, Hans Lundin's vocals get so raspy. You begin to smoke and drink a lot, and you yeah. hear in the new albums, his voice is so raspy. Yeah, so, uh, his uh, cool. his voice sounded a little weird on the new album. Yeah. And you know, the way to tell apart the Lundstrom from Lundin is the English accent because their voices are similar. It's right? almost impossible, man. Yeah. I actually had to have Hans uh, yeah. email me and he went line by line what he's yeah. singing, what Patrick's yes. singing. Because I tell couldn't by, tell. Well, yeah, Hans' accent is just more Swedish and Patrick's accent is more English. So yeah. You can hear, you can tell it by that little detail. But their voices okay. are so good together, you know, like the same voice, yeah. amazing. Because Patrick Lundstrom sounds like young Hans Lundin. And he, he, he did a cover of like uh, Save Our Morgon Grö. From the, I, would, I would listen to that, man. I would listen to the shit out of that. It would be cool. Like with like a tribute to yeah. the original Kaipa. It would be cool. Yeah, because the original album it was the masterpiece, like Uncaret. It was an anti-system song, like anti-religious, and to 
open up your mind basically like you can listen to it and you can just see that it had a very rebellious kind of tone to it like yeah. So we're just geeking out about Kaipa and Kaipa the capital here today with my good friend Jesse from uh, from Poland. Where are you in Poland? Are you like uh, near Warsaw? No, no, no. It's Dolny Śląsk near uh, Lower Silesia. Oh, wow. Nice. uh, My my, uh, area is not very famous, but it gave birth to the most popular rap group in Poland, Trzeci Wymiar. All That's right, crazy. and you know I recorded at the same studio in Valbzir as Trzeci Wymiar. You know it's amazing. Wow, yeah, that studio, man. I got all my drum samples. I use uh, I used on some of my albums, recorded in that studio. You know. Now, do you amazing. drum at all, or do you just program? I and used sample? to, but you know, uh, my neighbors uh, told me that enough is enough. You know, my next door neighbors. Yeah, I have an apartment, so that yeah. was a bad idea to drum in my apartment. Yeah, probably. But I do have my drum kit. I mean, parts of it, like cymbals and stuff. Yeah. All you right, know? so I'm taking it you much prefer Morgan's drumming to Darby Todd's. Mm, I don't know. I think the original drummer is the best. Well, you know. yeah. You know. It's little, I'm, I'm a huge Morgan fan, though. I think more How do you say his last name? I, I always say Morgan <laughs> Agron. <laughs> Ogrian is an Ogrian. A with, a, with a circle on top. It's an O sound. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. That, yeah. So it's o- so, 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 not Ang- so it's Anglagard. It's Anglagord. And because uh, you know. the second one's the circle, and then yeah. yes, yes, exactly. Yeah, the two and two dots. dots, dots, and A sound like Finnish. A A O. It's so fucking funny. That's nice. I was nice. confused at first, but oh, I yeah. learned it. It was like I eye opener. It was eye opener. I am a man. huge fan of Morgan's drumming, though. I think his drumming on Children of the Sounds is amongst the best things he's ever done. I haven't heard all that organ stuff, but this, man, the the way he plays them floor toms on this album, man, I don't think I've ever heard a floor tom sound as powerful as what Morgan does. It's just... I'm a fan of the cardboard 70s sound, so we got to disagree. I like the short 70s cardboard drum sounds. Oh, we love that that nasty dry sound of the 70s for sure. Yeah, you know, man, I'm 60. I'm going to be 62 next month. So, you I'm know, my heart always 30. lies in the 70s and that kind of I'm production. I'm turning 30, you know, and, and just I'm turning 30 in like two, two years. Or something. All right. Talk to me briefly about being 30 years old in Poland and being a prog rock fan. What's that like for you? Mm, yeah, it's, as you expect, you know, I'm just as a zillennial. That's like between a millennial and a generation Z year. It is like a limbo of like age groups because I like cartoons so much, man. I like the old cartoons, like the '90s and 2000s cartoons are so good. Like Tiny Toon Adventures, man. Animaniacs, man. Just amazing cartoons. Like I pay tribute to these cartoons like, all the time because they're just such heartwarming, like homeless. Well, you're you're an artist. I, I, are we looking at your work here instead of your face? Is that your work right there? Yeah, it's, it's my own uh, drawing. It's a comic book cover inspired by the Belgian comics, you know, like Andre Franquin or whatever. Interesting. With Tomé and Jeanne Genre. Okay. Tomé and Jeanne that's an amazing duo of artists. They did uh, Spiro at Fantasio, amazing, amazing comics. Like, my friend just shared me like, scans from that. Yeah, I'm, I have a collector's edition of one of the later, later uh, volumes, the Viper one. It was by the Veilman, Johan and Veilman, and that was very good, very good spy uh, comic, uh, made in Belgium, the French uh, area of Belgium. Right, right. Yeah, you know, because Belgium is like two countries, the Dutch. Basically, and yeah, and it's uh, Flanders and the other one. <laughs> Yeah, there's like two different vibes. Wallonia right? and Flanders yeah, or something the, like that. You know, Flanders so, is more like Flanders is more like you know the Netherlands, the Benelux yeah. vibe. I mean, there was a band called Banzai from the Flemish area in Belgium, and they instead of releasing their album from the French guys, they hated them so much they went to the Netherlands to release their album. Right. Poranata, remember that one? Yeah, yeah, I do remember that. It's been a while oh, since cool. I've listened to it though. Yeah, man, I like Good the stuff. Three Magicians. Song Three Magicians. Yeah, it's such a prog song. Like it's a caricature of prog. It's like yeah. 
How, how could this even be real? It sounds like a parody, you know. I like. I don't mind parodies of Prague. I mean, but it was Nick is a Brick is one of my favorite albums of all time. Yeah, it was so. made at the time and it was so non self aware. Yeah. It was like the Prague is ever. Also, yeah. remember Welcome from Switzerland. Oh, uh, I love Welcome. Oh man, it's Great an amazing band. band. Yeah, it's like Great Yes band. Clone with meets ELP. You know. Yeah. Yes meets ELP. Pretty and, much. And the yeah. song Chain of Days. It's like uh, it's in thirteen eight. Day has broken another day for many to burn in the one by one. I don't think I've spent a whole lot of time talking yes. about Welcome. Uh, that's a band that I haven't really talked band. a whole lot about. Fantastic yes. stuff. And uh, the second album has an epic called The Whip. Yeah, it's I like sung the second by album the too. original keyboardist as lead vocalist. And Did they ever have a third album, though? No, no, no. no I don't no, think no. so, right? No, no. But the first album, self titled, it had like two guys doing like vo multi layered vocal harmonies in the vein of Chris Squire's uh, solo yeah. record, Fish Out of Water. Because Bernie Crower sounded so much like Chris Squire, man. His voice was uncanny, Chris Squire, with that oh, yeah. more Celtic Celtic accent. Well, I did, a, I did an episode, uh, 25 bands uh, that were inspired or influenced by Yes. You know, Welcome was in that group. <laughs> I definitely had Welcome in there. Hey, there we go. I love it. So, you're you're all the way from Poland. So talk to me a little bit about the Prague scene in Poland. Uh, do you do you get to a lot of shows over there? Uh, what's no, going no, on? No. Well, due to medical conditions, I can't travel. I, I don't want to talk about it. It just it just sucks to be in this situation, but it's yeah. so good, you know. Yeah, I can't do. I mean, my ears are very sensitive, and going mm -hmm. to a concert would break my ears. Yeah, that's a problem. <laughs> Yeah, we don't we don't want to blow never, your eardrums out. So. I would never want to go to a concert wearing headphones because it would look cheesy. Yeah, right? yeah, it would nah, suck. Be... yeah, just maybe one day, maybe. But you know, I do like uh, creating my own music. I don't know if I told you about it. Yeah, I have like a whole bunch of albums on Bandcamp. You know, I don't, you, I don't even know if you're aware of these because, well, you're a busy guy. But uh, my my first album. It's called Epic May, and it was the, the circumstances under which it was made were gr grim, because it's a dedication to a passing friend. Uh -huh. It was like, shot, murder with gunshot. It was fucking Yikes. horrible. Yikes! And the culprit, his ex-wife and ex-cop. Mm. Uh, that culprit was like almost like un uh, unpunished for a long time yeah. due to the U.S. law system being a piece of shit. Yeah. Tell me about it. So, so that album, Epic May, was full of this raw emotion. Like it was like so genuine in terms of emotions. I tried to like create the best tribute to a friend I could ever do. Yeah, and like you can see, there is a legend of the Silver Wing, and Silver Wing was the nickname, you know, for their artistic name for like that guy, Sean uh, Sean Babbitt. Yeah, rest in peace, you know. It sucks. Yeah. But so make sure uh, you put a link to all that stuff on here so that yeah, people can listen yeah, to your music yeah, or send it to me and I'll put it in the description of the video because a lot of times I links don't I show up. Chat. I was a chat. Do you see this link? See this? Yeah. See this? Yeah, I got you. Good. Yeah, I got you there. And Perfect. then I made another album called uh, Retro Adventures and it was a step down. And uh, an Agent Mousy, oh man, it's a concept album with like furry stuff. You know, oh, this is a rabbit hole of like cartoon enjoyment. Basically, this whole movement, it, it was born from the passion for anthropomorphic animals in old cartoons and passion for, you know, uh, just suggestive, nasty for work stuff, <laughs> basically. Yeah. So it's like, it's like it's, yeah. But I'm gonna never gonna talk about that side. But it's still very good art movement and has created the best character designs in history. You know, like the, I love anthropomorphic like stuff. It's just right. so cool. It's cute and the mixture of like mixture of like cute and just very positive vibey. Like I made a parody of uh, anyone's daughter in the German mm. band. Yeah. You made that one? Oh yeah. Is, isn't it a bunny character? It's a funny man. I'm a big fan of anyone's daughter. They're possibly my favorite German band. Look at this. Uh, check this out. Boom. Nice. Can you see this? Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's this this cover. You know the the second album. Yeah. You can cool. see this 
I am a huge Prog fan and Cartoon fan and just like, it doesn't go well together. Like, have you ever seen this kind of art style in the Prog? I haven't. I mean, I have, it's only Doc by uh, like the Aristocrats. Yeah, Doc. I was thinking that. Doc. Uh, there's a couple maybe. That. Maybe yeah, Mike Mills with co hider might be interested. Yeah, but this Duck was like the only one that was really used the real, real vibe. How about Devin, and then, and then Devin, between... Devin Townsend, Ziltoid, maybe? Yeah, no, 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 no. I'm talking about anthropomorphic animals, you know. Yeah. It's, oh, yeah, yeah. Man, it's so good. Because Fun stuff. I was, I was, I grew up on this like old cartoons. As I yeah. said, Looney Tunes, man, Bugs Bunny, one of my favorite like cartoon icons. And when I was a kid, I watched the anime Lupin the Third. The first movie was directed by Miyazaki, okay. out of all people. Remember, remember Lupin the Third? Lupin the Third. No. Have you ever heard of it? No, it's a spy, a spy pursuit kind of anime, no. Japanese. And, but it's based on very European kind of uh, motifs. Okay. And the character is apparently an, an, uh, a descendant of the Arsène Lupin from the you know, old French you know, legends and stuff. Okay. You know, it's amazing. I, hey, I'm learning something. That's that's why you're on the show today. I figured we'd do yeah, something a little bit different. We've never done anything like this before. On the prob yeah, corner, have somebody on the show. Just, you know, out of the blue. But we've actually been talking about having you on the show for a while. So it wasn't really yeah. out of the blue. But, you know, we it. haven't done this before. And you came up with a great topic. Let's compare and contrast the two Kaipas, oh, I yeah, can't do it, right? Yeah, Kaipas. Yes. <laughs> Here we go. Yeah, the two Kaipas. There we go. And uh, it was a lot of fun. Uh, what What else you got for me today? Well, I'm going to talk about maybe a little bit for some self-promotion of my music. Because Please do. Well, it's prog, so our fans might, might like this in a way. So I got two Polish albums, Polish language albums uh, in my discography. It's Legenda Ser Helmuta and also there is uh, Liz Jonitov Alei Chasu, you know. Are those on your band camp also? Yeah, yeah, of course. Okay. And that Sir Helmut was like an, an EP. But you can hear, we can see the cover art being uh, cartoony in a way. And it was new at the time. It was before Doc was released, you know. It was yeah. before. So it was it was like brand new like that's this stuff also yeah marco sentimental. minimum stole your fire man yeah. he took that's your sentimental. idea remember days that uh, neo prog band from switzerland mm -hmm. oh yeah yeah check out sentimental i mean just man it's a parody of days very that's cool funny. artwork on their yeah. albums yeah look at the gesture yeah, yeah. The, there you go the, the gesture girl it's like and she's and she's like holding a block of like swiss cheese it's for just for like shits and giggles because you know days was a swiss band yeah so it was a joke swiss cheese makes sense yeah and, and sentimental is a pawn so you know sentimental you know it's, it's 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 all it's all jokes in it as you can hear see yeah, yeah just checkerboards uh gestures the cliches but done in a cartoon way that yeah I've never seen before it's amazing man very cool I have, I have lots of unreleased album covers because I always do it the reverse way. I create the cover first and then the music around it. Okay. But yeah. It's fun because I'm a visual artist, you know, yeah. I can do it. Yeah, that's a little different. I think it's usually done the other way around. Yeah, but I'm I'm two in one, so I can do whatever I want. Yeah. So this is Bigos Western. Like Bigos is a Polish dish. So okay. Spaghetti Western is Italian. Bigos Western is Polish Western. Nice. And I have one song from that album on my Newgrounds page. Plus, but you know, my Newgrounds page is like a mixture between cartoon uh, nerding and prog. So it's not for everybody. It's definitely for the people like me, but not certainly for people like you. Because my Newgrounds page is a mixture of like cartoon uh, suggestive imagery and uh, prog music. Man, it's, it's, it's a ride. But nice. it's unique. It, it nice. stands out. Well, you're unique. You're a different kind of cat. That's for sure. That's why I was uh, happy to have you on. I, I, we've gone like 39 minutes. I think that's long enough. I, yeah, I, okay. I think the people got what we wanted to talk about. Yeah. My uh, guest today, right? man, all the way most from Poland. Oh, man. Give me some final thoughts. Give me some final thoughts. Okay, so it was important because yeah. I've been nerding about Kaipa and studying the Swedish language for like long time and now it finally paid off that's so impressive guess, man good. you see I love we of. americans we don't we're, we're not good with languages man we think the whole world should speak english and we the get polish angry is, 
Like we'll go. Like I, I see Americans when I travel. You know, I was in Morocco, I, and know. all these Americans are getting angry at Moroccans. You know, How dare you speak Arabic, man? I'm well, American. Poland, speak English. Poland sucks at speaking English in general. Like really, it's, it's really sad. But Polish people generally are, have bad English. I'm one of the better ones, you know, in, 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 generally speaking. Because well, my friends just speak very poor English, you know, like from Poland. So I can't really just have them on like. In this kind of shows and right. i can't even feature them on my, on my albums because i have i know if a bunch of vocalists or good vocalists but their english sucks you know right. <laughs> yeah but you Very know polish accent you know what there's a band called uh cherry five from italy and that yep. vocalist has such a polish accent i was surprised man an italian guy talk, talk i love that italian. cherry five album man it's like proto goblin an amazing Proto Goblin, that's exactly vocals, what it was. With vocals. Yeah. But Proto Bagarot Goblin Somar. with English vocals and uh, Bagarot, Bagarot Samark was pretty good. And 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 Chris Squire's sounding bass all the way through that yeah, cherry five it was, album. It was like a yes tribute album, but with like the Italian school written all over it. Like Oliver, that song is amazing. Awesome. Man, I, I love, love that whole album. Man, I love that whole album. album, man. That cherry five album is ten out of ten to me. One of my oh, favorite okay. Italian records of all time. Yeah. So in conclusion, yeah, just I was very happy to just nerd about Prague, like the the most in my entire like YouTube career, you know. <laughs> I used to do hip hop music. There you go. But then I said, okay, fine, let's stop this hip hop charade and stop doing hip hop because I had an argument with another rapper who turned out to be a, an asshole taking advantage of me as a source of free labor. Yeah. So then I said, okay, that asshole should go away and I should stop That's doing right. hip hop. Life is yeah. too short. Hey, nothing yeah. against hip hop if that's the kind of yeah, music you're into. MC Sobieski. MC Sobieski was just like this old aging, like you know, just like uh, cuckoo clock cloudlander with like uh, a delusion of grandeur. So you know, right. he took my, my free labor as a tool, and he just stopped that's making right. interesting music. Now, his obsession with The Witcher was like was to destroy his career. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not gonna talk about. I'm just that's first. weird. That's I'm, just I'm, I'm weird gonna, to me. Forget him. Forget him. <laughs> Never mind all that. Anyway, it was an absolute pleasure having you on and geeking out about uh, well, just about everything from Kaipa I will send to you the audio. I will send you the audio of my uh, okay. of my voice. Yeah, uh, which I recorded. Yeah, you send that send over to me. And because, uh, you know, online is just not very good uh, with audio. There's yeah. some lags and stuff. I have it all taped on Audacity. Yeah, 15 minutes. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, yeah. No, we're in good shape. I think this went absolutely stellar. I wasn't sure about this episode, to be quite honest with you. Yeah, I didn't know if I was, you know, going to be happy enough with this episode. I'm in voice mode on only. The but I'm it's only a voice. I'm only a voice, but I could show my drawings using right. OBS at least instead of my face. That's right. Let the drawings speak for themselves. Hey, maybe maybe you're doing the people a favor by not showing your face. I don't know, but that's a that's a whole other issue. Chechi, we'll have you on another day. Uh, this actually turned out a whole lot better than I thought it was going to be, so I am going to yeah. put this up tomorrow so, on the channel. Okay, so let's. Bye. It was very fun. Yeah. Take care. Awesome. Awesome. Peace. Good to have Peace. you here. And uh, to all my people around the world, you know what time it is. I love you guys. Peace in the Middle East. Free the Tibet. Free the Ukraine. Free everybody. And God save the king. Save him. Oh, save King Chucky. Oh, Chucky's got that cancer. Bring him to America. Bring Amazing. that boy to America. He'll lay some hands on him. The hands of healing. Oh, yeah. And then we'll drink some poison. Oh, yeah. Thoughts and prayers for the king. Not going to work. You know what's going to work? We're going to bust out those rats. Javla. We're going to dance with snakes. Woo! Yeah. Javla perkele. Snakes. Javla perkele. Javla perkele. The rattlesnakes will do it. Heist avitu. Heist avitu. Heist avitu. Swamalainen. Kaupunki. Swamalainen. Kaupunki. I love it. I'll see you guys. Peace. Swamalainen.